A transmembrane protein need not only have a single helix. Here's an example of one with five helices, these cylinders, all traversing the membrane. It's a single polypeptide, and you can see the pieces connecting the alpha helical regions. And this particular structure is typical of pores in membranes. Remember we talked about nuclear pores? There are pores in the plasma membrane and other membranes that are there to allow the flow of substances across the membrane. This is an example of how that structure would be formed. The red region is the actual pore region. Take a look at this polypeptide and imagine what a hydrophobicity plot might look like. First of all, there are going to be in the hydrophobicity plot uh, not one, but several peaks that represent hydrophobic regions. But in this case, each of those regions that represent largely hydrophobic amino acids that are above the zero line, if you go back to that hydrophobicity plot, each of them are not going to be exclusively hydrophobic, are they? Why? Because the red region in this illustration is an aqueous pore, meaning a water pore. So water exists in that pore. So there are going to be amino acids in these helices that are hydrophilic. And they are the ones that are going to face the interior of the pore. So you can imagine that a hydrophobicity plot is going to be a bit more complex than what you saw in the example I gave you.